What's up investors, Sneer is here. Welcome to my 2022 investing and content creation plan. I know this New Year's plan video comes later than everyone else's New Year's plans videos, but I have a good reason. In my mind, I had to first summarize and postmortem the past year before I go on to plan the new year, which made me procrastinate this part. You see, 2021 wasn't so successful for me. In the investing part, my portfolio did outperform the S&P 500, but mostly due to other holdings that I picked years before this year. Uh, my holdings like in Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft, which you can easily see why I outperformed the S&P 500, but picks I made this year only did about 5% uh, in performance, so not that great. I also didn't research as many companies as I wanted and published write-ups about them, but I decided that doing a post-mortem and finding the reasons for everything is futile because this year had two major events for me. The first is that I got married. The second is that my mom got cancer and it weighed down on me and I had to take uh, a very long time to uh, to deal with it and handle it. So I decided I get a pass this year. It's okay that I didn't reach all my goals and I didn't research as much as I want and I didn't publish as much as, much as I want. Um, I get a pass. Before we continue, I want to mention that this video is an adaptation of my newsletter uh, written form, which you can see right now on the screen, which is much more detailed. This is like more of a free form talk to you guys. Uh, but if you want to go for everything that I write, uh, you can go to my newsletter. The link is in the description. There is one investing lesson that I want to share with you from the past year. And this investing lesson is my investment in Twitter. I initially invested in Twitter in November 2020 and the price in the lowest price of $39. I was completely lucky to uh, invest in this price. And I published my thesis a few months later, in, at which point it already rose by 60% and at the peak it got to around uh, 90%. And I said that my thesis is for them to go from $39 to basically double in three years and it happened so much faster and my mistake is that I didn't sell. Even though the thesis was for three years, I was lucky that the price action happened much earlier. Uh, even if it's not without with a good reason for the price action to, to happen so much earlier, I should have taken advantage of it. Even if I think that Twitter is a great investment for the long term, when uh, a price exuberance such as I had with Twitter happens to me. I need to take advantage of it at the, at the time. Uh, I was so inclined to find my other great business for life like I had in Amazon, Apple and Microsoft, but I neglected to see that it's a good trade to sell it after a few months if I did almost double my money because my thesis didn't say that it will more than double, triple, or be a 10 bagger within this uh, reasonable timestamp. I only uh, predicted that it will double. So if it already reached this price, I should have sell. Next, let's talk about my investing focus for the next year. My portfolio for the next year will consist of 12 to 15 companies. The reason I have 12 to 15 uh, is because I invest in an Israeli IRA which have regulation uh, that tells me that I can only hold up to 10% of my sum of money in one stock. So it limits me to at minimum 10 stocks and I need to have more than that to have some cushion for growth in a stock. Ideally, I'd rather be more concentrated than that, but I grew to love this number. It's concentrated enough that I will be able to track the investments I've made very closely but it's diverse enough that I will also be able to sleep well at night uh, knowing that I'm uh, diverse enough to not get hit by just one stock. Ideally, in the future, I'd like to be much more concentrated, but for now, it works for me. As for the investment methodology that I will follow, I will mostly follow value investing. Kathy Woods recently said that her growth stocks are in deep value and a lot of value firms invest in high growth uh, stocks. So defining what value is, is really necessary here. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. 
So for me, value investing is when I have most of the variables highly predictable and I'm able to use a DCF analysis or something similar to assess the value and tell that this stock is at 40% discount to intrinsic value or something similar. Now, high predictability means different things for different people. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Think that Zoom is a good investment based on the growth numbers they had uh, after the coronavirus hit. It's unpredictable for me because it depends on a small event with a very defined time, st time span that I can't assess what their growth will be in the future. So that rules them out immediately. It doesn't matter what their price is. Whereas if we look at hotels chains uh, and we see that they have a drop in uh, in the numbers since the pandemic but i can with high predictability say that we will get back to the numbers when things go back to normal i can't say when but i can say that it will happen uh, with high high uh, amount of predictability so that's uh, that's a value investment for me. To find these value companies, I will mostly look at companies with short-term events causing their stock to be out of favor. The second type of companies I will look at, but at much lower uh, intensity, is companies that I want to hold forever. Companies like I had in, as I mentioned, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. I want to find compounders that will compound for life and will grow by themselves for decades for me. Now there are many mechanisms to find such a company, one of which is Monish Prize spawner companies, which for example Amazon is. They started as a retail uh, company and then they spawned a cloud computing company from the incomes they made in the retail business. So uh, they keep reinvesting and spawning new businesses, some of them very successful within the same firm. And the other approach uh, that I will consider is the approach of Nick Split with shared economies scale, where the company uh, takes all the advantages of the scale economies as they grow, and they take these advantages and uh, funnel them back to the customer. Once you grow enough and you get the great prices and you give them back to the customer, smaller competitors are unable to do that because they don't have the scale economies and you will keep growing because the customers are uh, trusting you. One great example of such company is Costco that Nick Sleep invested in. So that's another thing I will keep an eye for. The next thing is where will I find the opportunities, the companies that I will research in hope to find the great value and maybe the, the spawner opportunities that I mentioned. So what I will do is I will take the hint from Monish Pabrai and I will simply clone other smarter investors. I will do it top down. I will start with the opportunities that the super investors of the world see, like Monish Pabrai, Guy Spear, Buffett, Munger, etc. I will go through their investments and if anything is relevant to me and anything that I deem that I can understand, then I will research it. Once I will uh, be done with that, I will go uh, a bit down to other great funds or investors in the community that I know and I will take hints from them. I will go all the way down until I find myself uh, doom scrolling Wall Street bets on Reddit. Uh, at which point I know that this uh, path is exhausted and I will try to find my own ideas by looking at uh, my own market and other things that I have relative advantage in. Now that we've talked about my investing plans for 2022, let's talk about the next fun part, which is content creation, which you look at right now in this video. So content creation is a very time demanding task. First, I have to write, and when I write my deep dives or I write uh, any blog post in my newsletter, it takes a lot of time. The research itself takes time, but writing it uh, in a form that is uh, consumable by you is even more time consuming because I have to first write a draft and then edit it and then re-edit it uh, for, for it to be really uh, consumable and understandable. And then after I finish writing it for the newsletter, I often make videos from it like you watch right now, which takes recording time. And as you can see, and as you can hear, my English isn't perfect because I'm not a native American or any native English speaker or country. So uh, it takes time. And then editing it, publishing it, uh, getting distribution. So why is it worth it for me to do all of that? And there are three reasons for that. 
The first and foremost is that you, the audience, are my investment partners. Every time I publish the research, someone who is already investing in the company I publish the research about reach out to me and points out things I maybe missed or things that he debates me about. And that's a really great conversation because as I see it in the investing world, everyone who is a great investor has a partner that he is talking to about every investment he made. Buffett has Munger, Guy Spear and Monish Prabhai famously talk about their investments, Nick Sleep had Zach as a partner, they always talked about the investments and I still don't have it, but I can talk to everyone in the internet and that's a great benefit for me in my investing parties. The next reason is that writing sharpens my thinking. When I just run the ideas through my head, some things uh, may seem uh, possible or may seem uh, true, but when I write it uh, for you guys, I have to rigorously check it because I have this fear other people will see what I write and it makes, it makes me better, it makes my research better and you're just my, uh, if you know the term from the programming world, you are my rubber duck uh, debuggers. I talk to you and by talking to you even without your response yet, I already make better decisions. And the last thing is that I want to eventually fund myself through this writing and content creation. I wrote it about it in detail in the newsletter, but basically I want to eventually uh, gate some of my content and get payment and be able to do this full time. Next, let's talk about the content types that I will make. So first and foremost, there is the deep dives of companies that I write in my newsletter, which is the cornerstone of all my content, and it's the most important thing. Um, but writing these deep dives alone in a newsletter uh, will not have distribution and nobody will hear about it. And I want people to hear about it because I want people who invest in the same companies to see it and comment about it and maybe send me their, their feedbacks like we did in my Street Edge deep dive that I published a week ago. And I got so much great comments that a day later I published uh, another piece with all the comments and all the things that I missed. So I want people to reach my content. So I have the deep, the deep dives, but then I need to get distribution and I will use two platforms for that. YouTube, which we are watching right now. And in YouTube, I'll have to go a little bit less deep into the details because it's not that engaging for everyone to watch all the details about every company. Most people on YouTube would want to have the high level idea and if we are intrigued by the high level idea we will check, check out the deep dive that I wrote. That way I will be able to capture some of the audience on YouTube through the algorithm and get distribution. The other path is obviously Twitter where Twitter really doesn't love uh, deep dives um, but it loves uh, occasionally threads and explanations within the platform. So I will keep creating those and get some audience within the Twitter side. I will also use Twitter to update things in real time uh, because deep dives often takes weeks to write and I might in the meantime get something interesting about the company or take a position and I will want to notify my followers. So I'll do it in Twitter. So that's it guys. Those are my plans for the next year. If you want to go a bit more into details about everything I said and it's much more detailed in my newsletter, check out the link below and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.